Small Business Insurance Beginner's Complete Guide Have you ever wondered what could happen to your small business if you didn't have the proper insurance coverage? From libel and slander lawsuits to weather events such as earthquakes and hurricanes, many risk events could derail your company's progress or worse, become a formidable threat to the very legal existence of the business in case litigation forces it to file for bankruptcy. Luckily, business insurance can help owners and entrepreneurs mitigate all kinds of uncertainties, assist in organizations and employees with accident recovery, loss reduction, and strategic risk management. Find out more. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of Sweetie Kiwi. How are you doing today? I'm doing fantastic, if you were to ask me. If you are doing as marvelous as I am, go grab a cup of coffee or tea or <laughs> a vodka and let's roll. Today, I want to talk to you about small business insurance, and I'm giving you a beginner's complete guide. Now, let's first talk about the major types of small business insurance. You have, when people talk about small business insurance, you have general liability insurance. This can protect a small business in case it is sued by a third party for injuries or damages. Next, you have errors or errors and omissions. Or this is also called professional liability insurance. This can help defend a small business from claims related to negligence or inaccurate advice. And I'll get to the nitty gritty of that that professional liability insurance. A lot of lawyers, a lot of uh, accountants use that. And then you have small business health insurance. This provides group health coverage and medical benefits for small business employees. Workers' compensation insurance helps protect employees by paying for their medical care in case they are injured while working. You also have property insurance. This type of policy provides coverage for items and property used by a business such as inventory or technology in the event of physical disasters. Those are what I was talking about earlier. Those are weather events. Commercial auto insurance covers the cars and vehicles that employees use for work purposes. Commercial umbrella insurance. This is this applies to incidents that go beyond the coverage a business already has through its other commercial insurance policies. Think of it, this is more like extra insurance. And then you have the BOP. Now, the BOP is very important. This is the business owner's policy. This is a type of small business insurance package that combines coverage for most common property and liability insurance risk, as well as several other coverage areas. So that's for the major types of uh, small business insurance. Now let's talk about the types of insurance you need for a small business. As a small business owner, you may be considering what types of small business insurance you need to provide for your company and employees. Now, every business has different needs, right? But here I'm giving you the, the standards, the best practices when it, comes, when it comes to small business insurance. And this applies across the board. So nearly all small businesses choose to have general liability and property insurance, as well as workers' comp, workers' compensation insurance, if they have staff members. Other forms of small business insurance, such as small business health insurance or specific types of liability insurance, may actually be optional depending on the industry. Now, although companies may not be required to purchase every kind of small business health insurance out there, such policies can still protect small businesses from unexpected losses and accidents. It's all about risk management. You got to think about what really applies to your company and how to protect your staff and your business. Overall, and that's very important to remember, small business insurance policies often serve as valuable resources for employees and employers by providing a safety net that shields the business from liability and risk while helping them move forward in the face of uncertainty. Now, in this guide, in this tutorial, I'm going to break down for you not only the major types of small business insurance, but also tell you why and when you need to get those those policies. I'll be right back right after this and don't go anywhere.
Welcome back, folks, to another edition of Sweetie Kibo. We are also having a conversation here around small business insurance. And I want to talk to you about, I want to give you a detailed explanation on each major type of small business insurance. So there are several types. You have general liability, as I said earlier. You have errors and omissions or professional liability. Small business health insurance. Workers comp and property commercial auto umbrella and business owners policy, the BOP. Now, general liability insurance. Most small businesses choose to invest in general liability insurance, which protects the company assets of small businesses in the event of being sued by a third party, any person or entity outside of the business. A general liability pol policy may help cover legal costs as well as any settlement or award if your business is sued. A general liability insurance policy usually covers claims arising from the activities or operations of a small business, such as bodily injuries, we see that a lot, property damages, false advertising, and libel and slander. Additionally, general liability insurance covers legal costs such as compensatory damages, and this could be high depending upon the, the lawsuit. You also have damages, punitive damages, legal defense costs, and settlements. Most general liability policies cover such claims whether they are filed by an individual or through a class action lawsuit. Now, since general liability insurance focuses on damages, damage claims brought by a third party external to the business, like a customer sleeping on the wet floor in a store, the policy typically does not cover employee medical expenses if they are injured on the job or damage to the property owned to a property owned by the business. So the high cost of lawsuits are one of the primary reasons why it is important. It is critical, especially in the United States. It is critical for a small business to have general liability insurance. Let's move on to errors and omissions insurance. This is also called professional liability insurance. Errors and omission insurance is a form of small business insurance that can help defend a business against financial losses from lawsuits and claims filed by customers and clients, as well as help pay for judgments and settlements. Now, professional liability insurance covers claims such as negligence, inaccurate advice, misrepresentation, and violations of good faith. So if your small company relies on using technical expertise to provide recommendations, advice, or any sort of physical care that may result in risks for customers, clients, or patients, then you likely want to get this kind of small business insurance. This, this, this same type of small business insurance policy is used throughout different professions. So it can be typically referred to interchangeably with two different names. So you have errors and omissions insurance or professional liability insurance. Those two names are, those two terms are interchangeable. They're similar, they're synonymous, right? So for example, if you hear in the news, you have doctors talking about malpractice insurance. This can also be called a medical errors and omissions policy. Depending on state laws, lawyers and doctors are often required to have errors and omissions insurance. Now, professionals from other industries that frequently use errors and, and, and omissions insurance or professional liability insurance include, you have financial advisors, insurance agents, real estate agents, accountants, IT consultants, architects, and engineers. Now, one thing you want to think about is that when you select an errors and omissions insurance policy, your small business has two types of coverage options available. You have the first option, claims made. So in order to receive insurance protection, this form of coverage requires that the insurance policy is in, in, in effect both when the action occurred and when the lawsuit was filed. And then you have the second category, the second option, which is occurrence. So this type of coverage tends to have a higher cost. However, it will protect a small business even if the lawsuit in question happens after the small business insurance coverage has lapsed, as long as the action occurred during the time when the insurance, when the business was covered. So given the serious nature of professional liability claims, errors and omissions coverage may be essential for any business, any business 
regardless of the industry, especially those industries specializing in expert advice and technical recommendations, right? For instance, you have accountants, IT accountants, architects, engineers, financial advisors, those are key. Now, the thing here is that the, the, the four types of uh, elements that are taken into account when it comes to coverage in a professional liability, AKA errors and, and omissions insurance are negligence, inaccurate advice, misrepresentation, and violations of good faith. I'll be right back right after this. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of Sweetie Kiwi. We are also having a conversation here around uh, small business insurance. I'm giving you a complete tutorial here. Let's talk a little bit now about small business health insurance. We spoke about errors and omissions. Now let's talk about small business health insurance. This type of insurance, also known as group health insurance, provides medical coverage and health benefits to employees. Now, according to the, to the ACA, the Affordable Care Act, a small business is usually not required to offer group health insurance if it has less than 50 full-time equivalent employees. A business with 50 or more full-time equivalent employees is required to offer group health insurance coverage to its workers and pay at least 60% of employee premiums. To qualify for small business health insurance, a small business needs to have at least one full-time equivalent common law employee who is not the owner, the owner's spouse, or an independent contractor. A company must also be officially registered as a business according to its state's regulation. This is very important, so you want to double check that. So for instance, a sole proprietor with no employees will not qualify for group health insurance and will instead be eligible for an individual health insurance plan. Another thing that is very important is that how do you know if your business, if your small business qualify for group health insurance? So three things, what I just said. Registration, make sure you are registered as a legal business according to state regulations. Employees, so you want you need to have at least one full-time employee who is not the owner or a spouse. And cost sharing, so the minimum employer contribution toward employee coverage is 50%. So if, if an employer decides to offer small business health insurance coverage, then that employer is required to share the cost of monthly premiums with employees. And like I said, it's 50-50. It's in most states, it's up to the small business owner whether to cover the cost of premiums for employees' dependents under the company's small business health insurance plan. These are small, these are very different. There are different small business health insurance plan types such as HMOs, PPOs, and, and uh, POS plans, along with different metal levels that signify the different degrees of coverage for each plan. One of the main advantages of small business health insurance for both employers and staff members is that in each group plan, premiums per person tend to be more affordable on average compared to individual health insurance coverage, right? So for instance, small business health insurance plans generally tend to have lower cost due to the risk pool advantage. So, and this is a key insurance concept because it means that when more people enroll and pay into a health plan, an insurance company is better able to spread the risks across the entire covered group, aka the pool of, of individuals. Consequently, the insurance company can more effectively cover the high cost of any one person's medical services. Now, besides that, beside the risk of, uh, not the risk, beside the advantage of the, the covered pool, you have other reasons why small businesses might want to get health insurance coverage you have you can hire if you have a small business and you cover you cover your employees medically speaking you can hire talented prospective employees you can create you have greater employee loyalty and retention and you have potential tax incentives such as deductions or tax credits right now when it comes to so we also have the next one with that's workers compensation insurance a small business can help protect its employees through workers' compensation insurance coverage, and this policy pays for the medical care of an employee who becomes injured or ill while working. 
and this may replace the employee's partial wages. So if a staff member dies from work-related injuries, this type of small business insurance may be able to provide compensation for the employee's family. In most states though, workers' compensation insurance may be legally mandatory if a small business has at least a certain number of employees. You have the, the range goes from uh, three to five workers and may go all the way to 50, depending upon the state. So you want to double check with your state. Each state also excludes certain workers from workers' compensation coverage. While these ex exclusions vary from state to state, examples may include farm workers and seasonal or casual workers. A sole proprietorship with no employees beside the owner may be exempt from workers' compensation. So in addition to medical expenses, work workers' comp insurance may cover related expenses such as replacement income. We've already talked about that. So replacement income, something happens, there are the, the injured staff member is paid partially. So if they were making 10,000 a month before, they might be probably getting 6,000 or 7,000 from the insurance company. So you have retraining costs. So the policy covers the cost to retrain that employee and reinsert him or her into the workforce. Living costs for permanent disabilities if the employee unfortunately has been has received has had some kind of disability arising from the injury or from the accident so the the insurance company will pay living costs for permanent disabilities and the, the insurer will also pay survivor benefits in case of employee death remember that workers compensation insurance may not pay the full amount most of this sort of claims are capped at particular maximums and a business may need to pay a deductible or other forms of cost sharing. It is critical, however, it is critical, therefore, rather, to note that the workers' comp ends once the injured employee returns to work and that workers' comp payments are usually tax-free. I want you to remember also that workers' comp only covers accidents and illnesses that occur during the course of work. This is an important element that courts countrywide have paid attention to. It, it only covers accidents and illnesses that occur during the course of work. To help protect the health of employees outside of work, an employer could consider enrolling in a small business health insurance plan for their workers. Workers' compensation covers the majority of the nation workforce. According to an industry organization, the National Academy of Social Insurance, the National Academy of Social Insurance, workers' compensation insurance coverage extended to an estimated 86.3% of all jobs in the employed workforce in 2015. By 2020, that percentage went to 92%. So we're talking here about more than 100, 140 million workers. I'll be right back right after this. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of Sweetie Kiwi. We're also here having a conversation around uh, small business insurance. I'm giving you a complete beginner's guide. And if you love the clarity and quality of the content so far, please consider subscribing to our channel. We release this kind of shows every single day, rain or shine. And uh, please turn on the notification bell so you are aware when we drop when we drop a new jam. And we do so every single day. Please comment below. Let us know your experience when it comes to small business insurance. Are you an owner yourself? Do you work for a small business company? What kind of experiences have you had in the past in regards to small business insurance? Also, like this content and share. We want the maximum number of uh, small businesses in the United States and beyond to see this kind of information. Let's talk about property insurance. Depending on the plan chosen, property insurance covers things like physical disasters such as fire, theft, or vandalism. This type of small business insurance is especially relevant for a business that has a physical location or storefront. So property insurance will provide coverage for property used by the business. I'm talking here technology, inventory, furniture, the policy will also pay for a restoration and repair cost. A company may have the option to add business interruption insurance to its property insurance policy. For instance, let's say a fire caused a business to go to burn down. Business interruption insurance could cover the resulting loss of income from the fire while the property insurance covers the fire's damage. So you are covered on both sides. Overall, 
Small business insurance policies that provide coverage for property and interrupted income are important options for business owners to consider. Let's move on now to commercial auto insurance. If you own, if you, if your small business owns or uses vehicles frequently, you need to have commercial auto insurance, especially if you are using this regularly and your employees are driving, for instance, if you have a truck company, this is required by law. It is required by law to have at least the state mandated minimum level of commercial auto insurance, also called business auto insurance. If an employee drives a car owned by the business and causes damage or injury, a commercial auto insurance policy will typically pay for the cost the business is liable for up to the policy's limit. There are two types of commercial auto insurance available to small businesses. One, you have something called a traditional commercial auto insurance policy. This type of policy combines liability and property coverages for a business's own and used by a business. And then you have a hired and non-owned auto insurance policy. This is for a business who has its employees drive their own personal or rented vehicles which are not which are not owned by the business for work purposes remember that some private auto insurance policies may not provide coverage if a car is used mostly for business purposes so you always want to speak with a licensed small business insurance agent to determine if it makes sense to switch to a commercial auto insurance policy instead generally though what we've seen in our analysis is that, and according to research, is that businesses that rely on vehicles for delivery, instruction, or employee transportation purposes may find commercial auto insurance to be a worthwhile choice of small business insurance coverage and risk mitigation. Let's move, move on now to commercial umbrella insurance. This type of insurance is meant for incidents that go above the coverage a small business already has through its forms of insurance for instance if a business was sued for five million and its general liability insurance only covered the business for four million then commercial umbrella insurance will be able to cover the remaining one million typically umbrella insurance may also be applied to other types of liability and small business insurance so think of the umbrella, you want to think of the image, the metaphor of an umbrella, which covers you overall. So that's the extra insurance. Generally, it may, take, it may make sense for a small business to consider commercial umbrella insurance if the company faces the risk of major suits or losses. Let's talk now about the BOP, one of my favorite policies, business owner's policy. I know because I have it too. A business owner's policy is a type of small business insurance package that combines coverage for the most common property and liability insurance risk, as well as several other coverage areas. Now, you think of the BOP as a bundled form of small business insurance, and as such, it is cost effective, it is affordable, it is cheaper. It is the cheapest choice for small businesses that want to make sure they have essential commercial insurance coverage. Because with a BOP, you have several things. A small business can also decide to select additional types of insurance to add to its policy. And while doing that, the, the company is creating a customized range of coverage. For example, a business owner's policy might only include general liability insurance and not professional liability insurance. However, employers would likely have the option to add professional liability coverage to their BOP. So it really depends on the, the, the industry, the company, and the owner. Consequently, if a business owner's policy is, were in effect, it could help companies find a more affordable solution for their small business insurance coverage needs. Now, one thing I need to, and I should have said that at the beginning, but I think we have a note throughout the video here, we're not providing specific insurance advice. Our team, we are an infotainment show. We, pro we do research, we do solid research, and we provide viewers and listeners with the results. So we are giving you, a, think of this as a general information program. Your particular company 
might be different. Every company is different. So you want to reach out to an expert to help you in the process to study to you want to reach out to a commercial insurance agent who will then be able to analyze your company, analyze your industry and propose to you the best the best products, the insurance products you need. All right? I'll be right back right after this. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of Sweetie Kiwi. We are also talking today around um, small business insurance. I'm giving you a complete guide here. There are additional types of a small business liability insurance. We have, there are many forms of specialized liability insurance that a small business can consider. Some common examples include small business insurance for liabilities related to cyber attacks and data breaches. We are in the era of the internet, so we see a lot more we see a preponderance a preeminence an increase in this type of uh, cyber related attacks you have products directors and officers employment practices and liquor related incidents especially if you are in the in the entertainment industry let's talk about cyber liability insurance as a re this is a rel re relatively recent form of small business insurance but cyber liability insurance is becoming more significant due to the rise, as I said before, of digital threats. So the purpose of cyber liability insurance is to protect businesses' digital data from online risks such as hacks, we're talking about data breaches, and cyber extortion. This kind of small business insurance will be important for specific kinds of businesses. Now, cyber liability insurance is probably an insurance cover a coverage, coverage program that is essential for small businesses, especially those that manage the, the personal data of customers, including their credit cards, financial accounts, medical records, or contact information. Let's move on. You Now you have product liability insurance. This kind of policy applies to injuries and damages resulting from the use of products made, sold, or transported by a business. So this type of small business insurance typically provides more specific protections from, from product-related legal claims than general liability policies, which tend to have limited coverage from product liability claims. Now, let me give you example, some, some examples of businesses that may benefit from a product liability insurance policy. And if you are in one of those, you certainly need to have one if you, if you, already, if you don't have them already. So manufacturers, distributors, wholesalers, transporters may benefit significantly from product liability insurance. Depending on the industry and business type, product liability claims may be especially costly for a business. So you want to really think about that. One other thing that I want to mention here is that the potentially high legal costs and personal injury awards ar arising from product liability claims makes it that makes the product liability policy an important element in a small business insurance arsenal, if you will, especially for companies in particular industries. You need to cover your back. You need to cover your operational back because something happens, you are, you are sued, the, the losses are multifold. So cover your back. I'll be right back right after this. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of Sweetie Kiwi. We are still having a conversation around small business insurance, and I'm just walking you through our tutorial, trying to explain to you what small business insurance is, the different types, what kind of uh, what kind of elements you should take into account before getting one, and all that kind of good stuff. Let's talk now about directors and officers' liability insurance. This specifically protects the directors and officers of corporations and organizations in the event of a lawsuit that claims they conducted business without regards for the rights of shareholders or others. Now, you have to understand that leaders are exposed to additional risk by becoming directors or officers. So because of that, businesses may choose to acquire this type of small business insurance. Directors and officers' liability insurance policies usually do not cover illegal activities or poor business decisions so the the decisions has to be proper under the circumstances and it has to be legit employment practices liability insurance epli 
EBLI is a type of small business insurance. We've seen this in the West and we've seen this also in the South. And this kind of insurance can cover damages for violating the civil or legal rights of an employee up to the policy's limit. So an employment practices liability insurance policy may offer coverage for different employee lawsuit claims such as discrimination, harassment, wrongful termination, and breach of employment contract. Now the EPLI policy will typically reimburse a business against litigation, legal cost, judgments, and settlements resulting from employment practices related lawsuits. Let's move on to liquor liability insurance. Now, if you are in the hospitality industry, let's say your business is a bar or it sells liquor in some form, you may want to pay extra attention to this small business health insurance policy because general liability insurance policies often exclude alcohol related incidents. As a result, a small business that sells or serves alcohol may need to purchase liquor liability insurance coverage. In fact, many states require businesses to have liquor liability insurance in order to acquire a liquor license. So a liquor liability insurance policy may include coverage for incidents such as altercations between intoxicated customers. So you have fights at 2 a.m. because those customers are drunk, related occurrences of assault and battery, intoxicated customers causing DUI accidents, workers drinking while on the job, and witnesses mental injuries from an incident. I want you to note though that the specifics regarding what incidents are covered by liquor liability insurance vary depending upon the location of the business and this is due, be, this is due to the fact that each state has its own legal and evidence requirements related to third party injuries. So if a small business decides to offer say alcohol at occasional company events then it has the option to purchase a liquor liability insurance policy that only provides coverage for those occasional events and may have lower premiums as a result. For example, you have a lot of companies that have holiday events, Christmas parties, right? So you can, if you have a Christmas party where you know there, there is a risk of something happening at that, com at that event, you may want to buy liquor liability insurance just for the Christmas party. That way, the policy may run from December 15th to December 31st or January 1st. And then after that, you know that you, you are covered during the risk event. I'll be right back right after this. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of Sweetie Kiwi. We are still having a conversation here around um, small business insurance. If you love the clarity and quality of the content so far please consider subscribing to our channel and turn on the notification bell we'll surely appreciate that we drop this kind of shows every single day rain or shine and um, you also might want to like and share this content if you believe we are adding value and might add, add value to somebody else's life we love small business insurance this is a great this is a great uh, topic because it allows small businesses to protect themselves to to enforce a proper risk mitigation plan and it's just great for the whole economy. Let's talk about other types of small business insurance. Each small business has its own unique priorities as well as risk. We've, we've mentioned that before. Extra, extra types of relevant small business insurance can provide effective coverage for key employees, identity theft, terrorism, and flooding. Let's talk a little bit about those. What is key employee insurance? This can help provide compensation for a company if one of its key employees dies or becomes disabled. Examples of key employees include executives and leaders who play a major role in a business and cannot be readily replaced. Key, employees insur key employee insurance may reduce the negative impact of losing a critical employee through financial assistance and could be especially val valuable for businesses which needs to prioritize succession and continuity planning. Next, you also have business identity theft insurance. This is a critical one because identity theft has become, has become rampant in the last few years. 
and this type of insurance can help protect small businesses and corporations when facing issues that involve identity theft and related types of financial fraud. Depending upon the, po the policy, identity theft insurance coverage may help with recovery via assistance with legal and resolution services. Now, there is, there is uh, something, um, there was a report a few years ago that said that showed that the Federal Trade Commission, the FTC, has indicated that of the nearly 3 million reports it received in 2018, 1.4 million or 48% of all reports were fraud related, while 15% were related to identity theft. So that's a huge number here. If you take 15% of 3 million, you're talking about 450. That's a lot. So the, 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 the FTC takes this kind of uh, reports very seriously. The report also found that credit card fraud was the most frequent form of identity theft in 2018. Now let's talk about terrorism insurance. Luckily, this is not the kind of insurance that a lot of companies, small businesses have to deal with, but we still need to talk about them anyway. The, the, the reason is that in 2002, Congress voted a, a law called the Terrorism Risk and Insurance Act trial and this requires the owners of specific types of commercial property to offer business owners the opportunity to buy insurance coverage against terrorist attacks so the trial also included a requirement that business owners policies BOPs offer terrorism insurance in their packages having said that small business owners are not required to purchase this form of coverage one important insurance small business insurance policy is commercial flood insurance especially for those areas that are periodically threatened by weather events so commercial flood insurance can provide coverage for a small business in the event of water damage resulting from floods the purpose of this small business insurance is protect areas of a building and property that may be affected by flooding i'm talking here about inventory equipment, ceilings, floors, walls, you name it. Even companies located in areas that are, not, that are not prone to seasonal flooding can still be affected by flood damage from unexpected sources, right? For instance, you have melted snow, you have clogged drainage systems, you have flash flooding from unusually severe rainfall or storms. If a business commercial property insurance does not already include coverage for floods, then it may be worth considering the purchase of this type of small business insurance because you never know and you want to be covered a to z right i'll be right back right after this don't go anywhere welcome back folks to another edition of sweetie kiwi we are about to wrap up today's conversation and but i want to talk to before in this last section i want to talk about how much is small business insurance i've given you the complete list of small business insurance policies available out there. Now let's talk about the, the cost. So the average cost of small business insurance depends on several key factors. Here I'm talking about industry and perceived risk, right? Certain industries such as those that involve working with heavy machinery face greater risks and hazards than others. And then this makes sense. Consequently, industries with higher potential for injuries are more likely to have higher small business insurance premiums. The next, we have the scale of the business. So a business with a larger amount of employees may face a greater likelihood of risk than a business with fewer employees. That just makes sense, right? Size matters. Similarly, factors such as the condition and size of the business property or building also play an essential role in determining insurance cost. Besides industry and perceived risk, the scale of the business, you also have the location of the business. So location-based factors that influence the cost of small business insurance include municipal and state laws and the regional frequency of natural disasters. You also, insurers also pay attention to claims history, the claims history. So a business with few insurance claims may pay lower premiums compared to a business with a higher number of claims. Right, so let me just give you, give you an example. 
if you have a small business with fewer workers, compensation claims may be conducting its operation more safely, say, than other companies and thus have a lower insurance premiums. So overall, small business insurance costs will vary depending upon the type of small business insurance chosen as well as the unique needs and characteristics of each business. Now, where do you find small business insurance? Small business insurance coverage is a complex thing. However, to find the right policy for your small business, you shouldn't have to suffer that much. So when you search for small business insurance, your best source of info here will be a professional licensed insurance broker. Brokers can provide relevant information that can help you choose the optimal small business insurance coverage for your company based on your budget, your industry, your risk factors and preferences. So if you can also go on the internet and search for and uh, go on platforms that compare and contrast small business insurance providers. So if your small business decides to offer group health insurance, for example, you, you can go and tap on those platforms and find out which, which, which insurer will give you the best quality health plans at affordable prices. And so you can compare and you can shop for small business health insurance with free, no obligation quotes. And this is a great thing by going on those platforms. Now, remember though that, as I said before, it's always good to talk to a specialist. We have not, pro we're not providing any legal accounting tax or insurance advice here. It's just better. We're giving you general information to assist in the decision-making process, but you need to reach out to a professional. You can reach out to a broker. You can, you can reach out to an agent. You can reach out to a lawyer, an accountant, it's anybody who has expertise with small business insurance policies. All right, folks. So this is it. This is the end of today's conversation. Just to kind of recap, small business insurance beginner's complete guide. I spoke about the major types of small business insurance, the types of insurance you need for a small business. I give you a detailed explanation on each major type of small business insurance. So we have general liability insurance, errors and omissions insurance, also called professional liability insurance, small business health insurance, workers' compensation insurance, property insurance, commercial auto insurance, commercial umbrella insurance, and business owner's policy, the BOP. And then I spoke about additional types of small business liability insurance. So I spoke about, I spoke about cyber liability insurance, product liability insurance, directors and officers liability insurance, employment practices liability insurance, liquor liability insurance, and other types of small business insurance. For example, key employee insurance, business identity theft insurance, terrorism insurance, and commercial flood insurance. In number five, session number five, I spoke about how much is small business insurance. And I give you the four factors that affect the cost. And last but not least, I spoke about where to find small business insurance. I hope this guide, this tutorial was uh, was a joy to listen to as it was for us to prepare. And I wish your small business very, very, very extraordinary prosperity. And hopefully you, you will be able to cover all the risks that your business can encounter in its operations. I will see you next time. But until then, remember, stay insured and stay marvelous. <laughs>